Hey guys, welcome back to Clinical Physio. I'm Khalid Maidan and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about a pulmonary embolism or a PE. I'm gonna be talking to you about what it is, how it happens and some of the key things that you need to consider for your patients. So without further ado, let's dive in. So let's discuss one of the most common PE scenarios you'll find. Your patient has just had a total knee replacement and you're on the orthopedic wards where you find that they've had a red and swollen calf. In the next few days, they feel as if they've been having some chest pain, which is worse when they try and take in a deep breath. They also find they're short of breath and they feel as if their pulse is racing. This is one of the most common scenarios that might indicate a PE or a pulmonary embolism. But what actually is a PE? So a PE is simply described as a clot within the lungs, but most commonly, the actual clot starts outside of the lungs. So if we think about our patient who has just had the total knee replacement, for example, it may be that they have experienced a DVT or a deep vein thrombosis where a clot forms in the veins around the knee joint itself, most commonly in the calf. The clot or a piece of a clot called an embolism can then travel from the veins in the knee through the circulation system before it unfortunately arrives in the blood vessels around the lungs. That clot then blocks the blood vessels within the lungs, which can cause damage to the lung tissue and of course can restrict gaseous exchange in the lungs affecting our oxygen and carbon dioxide levels throughout the body. As a result, a PE is an emergency situation in the medical world and should be acted upon immediately to try and break up that clot in order to restore full circulation again. So what are some of the risk factors for an individual developing a PE? Well, a history of DVTs and poor cardiovascular history are by far some of the most common ones, as is atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is where we have a buildup of plaque and fatty tissue within the blood vessels. As you can see, when the vessels are already blocked by something else, there is an even greater chance that a clot can block those vessels further before that clot moves around the body and into the lungs to cause a PE. Other risks include obesity, dehydration, significant immobility, perhaps after a period of bed rest or following a surgery, but also active cancer, as the risk of blood clots developing is said to be four times higher for a patient who has active cancer than in the rest of the general population. So you will have heard us say earlier in this video, a PE is a medical emergency. And one of the key treatments is for the patient to be prescribed blood thinners or anticoagulant medication in order to try and break up those clots. But of course, Everything else associated with maintaining and enhancing the lungs is going to be incredibly important. And you may find that your patient who has had a DVT or has had a PE or has a past medical history including conditions such as stroke or myocardial infarction may be using those blood thinning medication for a long period of time after the event has occurred. So as always, the details of this video should be seen as general information, but not strict medical advice. If you have any suspicion that a DVT or a PE has occurred, you must consult the appropriate medical professional as soon as possible as a medical emergency. But otherwise, we really hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you've had, please support us by hitting that like button. It's the best thing you can do for our channel. And if you'd like to see more about Clinical Physio, have a look in the description below for details of our social media channels, but also our website clinicalphysio.com where we have loads more resources for student and junior physiotherapists. My name's Khalid Maidan, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you really soon, right here on Clinical Physio.